very fortunate to be joined by Father Peter John Pearson, who is the director of the Southern African Bishops Conference, Catholic Bishops Conference. Thank you so much for joining us, Father. Uh, you've echoed the sentiments of many that uh, the archer's death has left a void that's just too hard to possibly fill, but the best tribute to the arch would be to continue with his legacy. Yes, I think that's um, just the most obvious thing. I think one of the dangers in moments like these is that we tend to almost um, uh, consign the arch to the role of the cheerful bishop, the chuckler, the laughing um, um, person making difficult situations smooth and dancing and just leave him in that category when in fact he was a much more serious person. He engaged the more difficult areas of our life together theologically. He engaged the questions that are still seeking answers. And so part of what I'm concerned about is that we fob him off to the kind of stereotypes of the jolly man dancing in the crowds and, and don't pay sufficient attention uh, to the difficult questions that his ministry raised, the difficult questions that his life raised, and the very difficult questions that he asked towards the end of his life. I think that we try to be quite nuanced as a station, certainly, in uh, trying to balance mm. his uh, his impish, mischievous nature, along with the extreme courage and bravery yeah. that he presented, as well as his anguish that we often saw, despite him being a man of God, he was such an ordinary man. He was, a, he was so human. And I, I wanted to ask you how he grappled with those very difficult decisions and some of those things that happened to us in our lives, such as COVID or uh, the death of a loved one or a child, how he dealt with those issues and his God? I think he'd answered that question in different ways at different times because it's a question that arises almost spontaneously um, in people's hearts when they see him um, ministering with that balance of the imp and the, um, and the serious theologian. And he would say it was his rootedness in communities and the way in which um, people um, on the ground, in difficult spaces, in broken places, um, articulated um, their issues of faith. And he was able to draw on that, to be inspired by that, to find hope in that. And with that, he also, and to that, he also brought the depth of his theological wisdom, of his, um, of his uh, academic uh, background, and was able, in a marriage of those two sources of inspiration, to find um, answers that spoke to the heart, but also left footprints in the context. Um, and I think that was a very rare gift. Not many people have that gift, um, to have an ear uh, and to have your heart close to the ground, but to have your head also engaged in formulating um, answers that are often fresh and therefore often viewed askance. But um, he was courageous also in that sense of bringing um, broken places um, to the fore and broken people to the fore. It makes me think a little of that line in Hamlet, you know, uh, um, where he speaks of the crack and then says, you know, you know sleep well, sweet prince, take your rest, um, angels sing you to your rest. Um, he had that way of opening, of opening the heart, of showing vulnerability and of having a heart for those who are vulnerable. I think it's with all of those, those myriads of spots of inspiration that he was able to harness, that he brought um, such hope and such um, um, a, an approach, a, a contextual approach to the difficulties of our lives and of countries that he was involved in. You, you've put that so beautifully and so prosaically. You have a marvelous gift of the English language, if I may say. It's such a <laughs> beautiful you. way of speaking. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, what were his concerns shortly before his death. I mean, we know that he, he was concerned about the future of the country. What conversation did you have with him about that? The last conversation I had was certainly around um, the questions of poverty. Um, it was around the issues of corruption um, and corruption across the board, 
wherever it reared its head, in um, the private sector, in the public sector, um, that which he often called the theft from the poor, um, which was his definition and, and a very apt definition um, of corruption. Um, places in the world where um, he thought um, democracy was fragile. Um, you know, his outspoken concerns uh, for um, the Rohingya people, his concern um, around Palestine. Um, these were, were deep concerns, um, world peace, but also the poverty um, that he saw around us and um, the fragility of democracy in so many parts of the world um, and the rise of populism, the rise of um, of, of nationalism, um, those um, signs, those very disturbing signs of our times, these concerned him greatly. And, um, and I think a lot of his um, quiet time in the last months um, was um, spent in, um, in, as he would put it himself, praying his way through the, this morass of immorality. I think many people don't realize that he spent at least six hours a day in deep meditation uh, and in conversation, silent conversation, silent prayer with God. And uh, we, we didn't see that side. No, no. And he would say, as many people and many of us who were privileged to speak to him about these things, um, um, would remember that he attributed whatever interventions he was able to make in this country on the world stage, um, however he was able to channel his diplomacy, um, it was, he was very convinced of this, the result of those six hours of quiet time. It was the result of getting up at four o'clock in the morning. It was the result of those long walks, especially in the garden at Bishop's Court um, in, the, in, in, in the morning and in the sunset, watching the sun set over the mountains that gave him that insight, that courage, that strength. Father Pearson, thank you for your insight and as I said, your prosaic use of, of language to describe a man that deserves to be celebrated in the way that you have, have done him, uh, I think incredibly proud. Thank you so much thank for your you time so here on the NCA. Thank you. Thank you.